Hello and welcome. Uh, this is video eight in an eight part series on World War I. And in today's video, uh, we're gonna take a look at the overall legacy of World War I uh, and simply talk about uh, some of the problems uh, with uh, the Treaty of Versailles, for example, and the uh, lasting impact that that would have that would uh, overall be negative. Uh, one of the hopes with what became World War I was that it would be the war to end all wars. And unfortunately, uh, that's nowhere close to what ended up coming from the whole thing. Uh, so with that, let's uh, take a look at some of the, the, the challenging aspects of the conclusion of World War I. Here we go. So looking at some of those types of things, I think you can see how this was essentially a doomed treaty, uh, one that was not gonna, uh, certainly not gonna work well for Germany uh, practically or with how they felt about it. And it would, it would end up being bigger than that. Countries beyond Germany ended up being upset by this treaty. Now, one thing to take a look at at this point was how the map of Europe in particular changed. Uh, if you look at what's on the screen right now, you can see uh, this is what it looked like before World War I. Uh, you see the German Empire quite large. You see Austria-Hungary quite large. Uh, you see the country of Russia. Um, notice you also don't see some countries uh, that you will soon see. You don't see Poland, for example, on this map. Uh, one of the things that came from this, and this ended up affecting more than just Germany, was a changing of the map. So on the second map, you can see that Germany is much smaller. Austria-Hungary has been broken up into two parts. Uh, you have some new countries like Yugoslavia. Uh, you no longer have an Ottoman Empire. You have the country of Turkey. Uh, you now have this newly created country of Poland. And also you see specifically, if you move to the north, uh, countries like Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia as, as uh, unique countries. Uh, so there were a lot of changes. And that's not necessarily good or bad uh, that those changes happened, uh, but, but anytime, anytime there's change, it can be hard uh, to deal with that, especially if uh, people within those areas where boundaries changed didn't necessarily like how the changes took place. Oh, I almost forgot another new country, uh, Czechoslovakia, right there in the middle. Now, as far as other aspects of how this process unfolded that led to things not working out very well, um, the United States never signed on to the Treaty of Versailles. Uh, one of the parts of the U.S. Constitution is is when it comes to a treaty, uh, you need to have you need to have uh, the Senate ratify a treaty. When that happens, uh, the Senate didn't have enough votes to accept the Treaty of Versailles. Uh, so one of the things that came with that is we never joined the League of Nations, even though it was our idea. We were never a part of it. Uh, Germany, as you can imagine, was bitter and hateful. Uh, so if nothing else, uh, seeds of future uh, conflict were sown uh, with the Treaty of Versailles. Uh, see World War II, two decades later. You also know you've got a, a bad a bad process when countries on the winning side end up upset. Uh, Japan and Italy in particular were on the Allied side. They thought they were going to benefit from the outcome of this war. Uh, as it turns out, uh, they didn't acquire some of the territory they thought they might pick up. And so they were upset. And again, if you think forward a couple of decades to World War II, uh, countries on the opposition side, at least from the American perspective, Germany, Italy, Japan, uh, should be no surprise uh, why some of that uh, uh, shaped up the way that it did. Uh, so the peace that people hoped would be long lasting after this war was over would end up being uh, very short lived. And just a couple other things real quick, speaking to the overall legacy of World War I. A lot of people died. Uh, a lot of people were hurt. If you just look at soldiers, uh, depending on the sources you look at, over 8 million soldiers died. Um, more than twice as many as that were wounded. Uh, there were at least as many, if not more, civilian deaths uh, that took place, uh, either through starvation or disease. Um, it was devastating, especially uh, for European countries. Less so for the United States, but certainly to countries like France, Germany, Russia, England. Um, most likely, about every household in those countries had somebody who was directly impacted by that, either because someone close died or was severely hurt uh, through the war. So everybody, everybody in many of those European countries uh, felt the impact of this war moving forward. And then just a little bit on the costs. Uh, the war at the time cost about 338 billion, which is equal to over 5 trillion today. And not only was it costly uh, to wage the war, but so much was destroyed during the war that moving forward when it was over was very difficult uh, because cities needed to be rebuilt, uh, farmland needed to be restored. Uh, so to, 
to be able to to make money and start moving forward uh, when it was over was was very difficult. Uh, so everybody really struggled uh, with the process. It's one of the reasons why it's nice to avoid war uh, because no matter who ends up on the winning side or losing side, everybody ends up losing uh, to some degree. And then something we'll be addressing in in the next some of the next topics would be just the the emotional suffering uh, that that moved forward. Uh, one of the things that had happened by the beginning of the 1900s is a lot of people, you know, through movements like uh, the Enlightenment, uh, began to think we were really figuring people out and really figuring society out. And the way things unfolded with the war showed people that we hadn't figured it all out yet, and that was pretty tough for people to deal with. Uh, it, it is very difficult when you think you know what's going to happen, and then you find out you were very wrong. Uh, so this this would this would uh, have a lasting effect in a lot of different ways, and would definitely shape what the next couple decades uh, would look like. Well, thanks for watching the video today, and hopefully you had the opportunity to take in the other videos in the series. I hope you found them helpful and informative, and hopefully you'll join me in future videos. Thanks for watching.